Yes, Margaret. Sweet, Andrew. I'm listening. Would you please put the cherries on top, Barry? Okay, I don't appreciate the sarcasm, but I'll do it. I'll see you at the airport tomorrow. <laughs> So whether she's asking reluctantly or he's asking in earnest, there's one thing that can make a proposal a little less awkward, and that's an engagement ring. According to the National Retail Federation, consumers spent nearly $4 billion on jewelry for Valentine's Day last year. And if new bling is on your shopping list, well, listen up. Lab-created and diamond alternatives are rapidly rising in popularity. And as Kira Phillips reports, there are a lot of new options out there, and experts say some shoppers may not be buying exactly what they intended. Money can't buy love, but it can buy a ring. And for Molly Carlson, that was a big deal. Her boyfriend Scott popped the question during a vacation in 2018. But he waited to buy the ring so they could pick the perfect one together. And they did, at a jewelry store at their local mall. It was perfect, they say, until... I took it to another jewelry store, and I said, what can you tell me about my ring? And they told me, well, I can tell you it's not a natural diamond. Turns out, Molly's dream diamond was actually a diamond created in a lab. When the salesperson was describing the ring to you, what did he say? He just basically, this is the style, this is the cut, this is the clarity but never once about, this is lab. The issue, the Federal Trade Commission says, is disclosure. Jewelers must clearly tell customers that it's man-made before they buy any diamond that's not natural. So now, after concluding not every bling business is following its marketing and sales guidelines, the FTC recently sending warning letters to eight online jewelers that sell lab-created and simulated diamonds. Three things that we're seeing, use of the term cultured to describe a diamond, uh, use of the word alternative to describe a diamond, and simply using a brand name next to the word diamond and not having additional language close by to make clear the consumer that what they're buying is not in fact a mine stone. One of the sites the FTC sent a warning to is Diamond Nexus. Here on its site, there are descriptions like Nexus Diamond Alternative, and the company says that language is clear and customers understand they are not getting a mine diamond. The site also has a page that explains how the stones are made, but the FTC says that's not enough. Other terms we've seen are things like Diamond Alternative, which is especially ambiguous because it could refer to anything. Diamond Nexus says the FTC guidelines are outdated. The Nexus Diamond Alternative. And they stand behind their language. The company telling ABC News, what we offer for customers is an incredible value for those who care about beauty and budget over chemistry or creation method. So how can you be sure of what you're getting? Gemologist Antoinette Matlin says, if it's a diamond you're after, ask directly if it was created in a lab and get that information in writing. Whether it's a laboratory diamond or a mined diamond, all of that same information should be on the report. It's something Molly says she wishes she had done. Never crossed my mind that that should be a question I would ask. And Kira joins us now in D.C. with more. Kira, there are a lot of reasons that, that people might prefer a lab-created diamond or a diamond alternative, but Scott and Molly, they're saying they thought they were getting a natural diamond, right? Exactly, and they were so excited about it because this was the first time Molly was ever going to have a diamond. I mean, matter of fact, the first person in her entire family to ever have a diamond. So just to show you how, how hard it is to see what is natural and what is lab-created or what's a simulant um, by just the mere naked eye, look at these two pictures and tell me, can you even take a guess here and figure out which one is the natural diamond and which one is the simulant. So what I'm thinking initially is that the one on the left seems to cut up a little bit more. So I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest, think that that's the real one. Okay. It is not. Or, wait, when I say real, the natural, I'm going to say. There you right? go. Very, right, exactly. I've learned, I've learned a lot from your piece. <laughs> so have I. I mean, Lindsay, it really comes down to very specific verbiage, and that's what's been so confusing for so many of the consumers. So now, there are ways um, that you can look for, for other things that might trigger maybe a red flag, and that's the inclusions, Lindsay. If you look very closely at a diamond for 
for an inclusion. That's the birthmark, if you will, within a mined diamond. It's also called a blemish. It's those small imperfections in natural diamonds. And many simulated diamonds and lab-created diamonds don't have those inclusions. Uh, interesting. So you, there are some distinctions that you can make with the naked eye. That's good to know. Kira Phillips, <laughs> thank you for that report. Right in Thanks, time for Lindsay. Valentine's Day. There you go. Right. You got it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.